Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Stake. It's been a while, but, but let's get started. Um, what I'm going to be going over today is my mock draft. It's that time of year where we start to predict who's going to be drafted where. Uh, we got the NFL Combine starting now, so that's exciting stuff. We'll get to see whose stocks rises and falls after that Combine. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going over my mock draft 1.0, meaning, okay, this is before the Combine that's happening this week and before the Pro Days that will happen. Um, this is where things will stand and then I'll do another mock draft after the combine pro day and then I'll do another mock draft literally right before it's time for the draft um so kind of you know a three phases there but this is the first phase of the mock draft now keep in mind here with with the way I do mock drafts I don't project trades so while I think it's likely because Chicago said that they're opening and trading that pick and stuff like that it's like I can't for, I, I can't, you know, assume that's going to happen until it happens. So, therefore, you know, they're going to stay put and other teams won't make any trades until I see it happen type of thing. Because, again, I don't, I don't like to project that. Because um, if the trade doesn't happen, then it kind of screws everything up. But um, but let's get started. Um, Chicago has number one overall pick. And, again, I think they're going to trade it. But, again, um, this is just assuming if they keep it. And they already said they're going to stick with Justin Fields, which is why they're trading down. Um, so, they're not going to. I mean, unless they have a last-minute decision, I don't think they're going to draft a price yet or anything like that. So if they stay number one, if there's no takers to trade or whatever, um, they're going to go with either um, the defense tackle Jalen Carter from Georgia or the pass rusher Will Anderson Jr. from Alabama. I think they are going to go Will Anderson Jr. from Alabama, you know, because they lost um, Roquan Smith to Baltimore. You know, so they need a good pass rusher there. And Chicago's desperate need to, like, tackle and receiver and all that. Both the tackle and receiver prospects aren't worth being a number one pick. So that's why they would go with Will Anderson Jr. in this case. Um, Houston, number two. A lot of people think they're going to take Bryce Sander, a quarterback. But it's just like, I feel like, you know, especially having a defensive minded head coach, he just may want to, you know, try to fix the culture first and foremost. And then maybe next year when it's a better quarterback class like a Caleb Williams or a Drake May, then worry about the quarterback then um, and suffer with another year of Davis Mills or even go get yourself a free agent like a Jimmy G or something like that, you know, to tie you over for this year. Because um, so, since you have all these picks, you know, especially high picks, you don't want to risk it on a quarterback. You don't know if it's going to work out or not. Um, so I think... If Chicago's willing to junior, then that means Houston will go Jalen Carter second overall. Third, Arizona. I've heard they're willing to trade down as well. I'm not blame them. They should. Um, but the desperate need here is defensive end for Arizona, especially J.J. Watt retiring and the fact that defense was not good in general last year. So I'm going to have them take defensive end Miles Murphy from Clemson. Uh, fourth, Indianapolis. Um, this is where the first QB is off the board, and I have the Colts taking Bryce Young, the Owner Jim Mercy has already said he, he's in love with the quarterback from Alabama, you know, so it makes sense that that's the direction to go. Now, the, the new head coach, you know, the former Eagles off his corner, he could be thinking, oh, I mean, like this quarterback better and all that. So it's not a slam dunk, but usually what the owner wants, he gets. So I think they're going to go Bryce Young there. Fifth, you get Seattle. Um, they definitely need to fix their defense, but especially the interior of the defense side. So, so I have them going defensive tackle here. With Brian Brees from Clemson, another Clemson defensive um, defensive lineman there, and that's gonna because they desperately need to fix their run stoppage game. Um, six is Detroit. Now the clear issue with Detroit was their secondary, uh, specifically the corners. So they're gonna go corner. Now the problem is there's no like you know Sauce Gardner or Stingley where you you know those are the top corners. Like there's like five corners. They all can make the argument they should be the first corner taken. So it's going to be interesting to see what, what you know, which players teams value more. But I'm going to have them go with a Big Ten alum and uh, Devon Witherspoon from Illinois. Um, I have them going with that guy. Again, you can't go wrong with the other corners, but I feel like that's what direction they're going to go there. Um, seven, Las Vegas. Now, you think if Rodgers does leave Green Bay and is playing that the Raiders are going to go hard after him. If not, then, you know, and if they can't trade for Matt Jones, then they're going to go for Jimmy G, you know, since Jimmy G already knows Josh Manuel's offense and all that. But if they can't get none of those veteran options and they have to go rookie here, and I feel like um, 
they're going to have a quarterback here. But uh, instead of C.J. Stroud here, I feel like Josh McDaniels is going to roll the dice on Will Levis here. Um, and we'll and we'll see if that works. A lot of people are high Will Levis. I'm kind of still skeptical about him, but we'll see. Um, a Atlanta. Now they could take a quarterback here, but I feel like, and they're definitely going to get into the quarterback since they released Marcus Mariota. But I feel like if they're going to get into the quarterback, you know, assuming they can't get Lamar, it's going to be like for a veteran and Ryan Tannehill, who's already been in Arthur's offense, you know, or something like that. It'd be weird to draft a rookie, play him a couple games, and then draft another rookie after that, you know, this high up. So um, I feel like they're going to draft uh, – I, mean, I could see them going all line here, uh, but I feel like they're going to go defense here, really shore that up. So I'm going to have to get pass rusher Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. Nine is Carolina. Again, if they can't get a Derek Carr or, some, or something like that, then they're going to have to go to the draft here. And I feel like – um, they're going to draft C.J. Stroud here because um, he's the one that's like, I feel like there's not as many uh, risks with him versus others like Anthony Richardson or Will Levis and all that. So uh, it's kind of a safe bet there. So I've been going C.J. Stroud. 10, Philadelphia. Now, they don't really have a lot of needs. There's a lot of free agents, um, specifically um, in second corner and um, running back, defensive defensive tackle area, stuff like that. But they have rookies that, that they drafted last year that should be able to kind of replace them in those categories. So, again, it's more just for, you know, um, depth at this point because they're a load roster. But um, I have them picking up uh, cornerback Joey Porter Jr. Uh, for Penn State. Now, I don't think he's – the I, don't, I wouldn't put him as my like, top corner – um, some people may have him as like the fourth best corner, but because, again, Penn State, you know, right in your backyard there, it just makes sense to draft him. You know, he's a first, a good first round prospect. Again, you're just drafting for depth at this point, so I feel like they're gonna draft him. Eleven Tennessee, now the clear near. I mean, besides quarterback, you know, assuming they move Ryan Tannehill, the clear need here is offensive line. So that there, this is where the first offensive tackle is going to come off the board here. And Peter Skarnowski for Northwestern. Um, 12 is Houston. Again, um, you can go any position here you want to go. I have been, they draft Stingley last year. So I'm going to have them draft another corner this year to kind of be their foundation corners for the future. And I'm going to have them take another SEC corner in Sam Smith from South Carolina. Um, 13, you get the New York Jets. Now, assuming Jets have been traded, a first-round pick or anything like that for a quarterback at this point, the clear near here is left tackle, and that's where I feel like they're going to draft Ohio State tackle Paris Johnson. Um, 14, New England. Not a lot of – I mean, again, they could go wide receiver here, but you know with Bill Belichick's style, it's not really their style to draft a receiver in the first round. Um, and besides that, I mean, I, I know Belichick would like to shore up his – defense so I'm, i have them draft in safety the top safety and draft brian branch from alabama um 15 green bay now they have a couple needs here one and wouldn't help to get another wide receiver but i'm gonna have them get their star tight end and michael Mayer from Notre dame this guy's a beast um and i i think um it makes sense for green bay to go that route um 16 is washington um i'm gonna have them take a uh, cornerback here and Christian Gonzalez from Oregon. A lot of people think he's a top 10 pick. So Washington gets a little bit of a break there that he falls down to 16 in this scenario. Um, 17 is Pittsburgh. Again, the clear need here is to, you know, sharp the offensive line. So I'm going to have them take Broderick Jones, the tackle from Georgia. 18, the Detroit is another pick here. And since they get another first round pick here, this is more just, you know, you can, you can take some risks. Um, and in this case, I've been drafting defensive end Luke Van Ness from Iowa. And what's interesting about him is that, like, he he, did, he didn't get a lot of starting reps at Iowa. So he's more, you're just drafting him based off, you know, size and potential and all that than production. So it's, a, so it's definitely a risk there, but it's a high risk. Um, but it's a low, but it's a risk, you know, high reward type of thing. So I feel like that's what they're going to go there. Tampa Bay, um, they could use a quarterback here, but they said they're going to roll with Kyle Trask. Um, so have fun with that. 
But in order to make sure things go smoothly for Kyle Trask, we're going to shore up the offensive line. And I'm going to have them take and tackle Antoine Harrison from Oklahoma. 20 in Seattle. Seattle gets another first-round pick here. Again, it wouldn't hurt for them to shore up their defense um, or even their the interior of the offensive line. But I'm going to have them take quarterback Anthony Richardson for four. Now, to me, he's not a to me, I wouldn't take him in the first round, but a lot of people like him in the first round. So I have him taken. And since, you know, you're, they're probably going to re-sign Geno Smith, that means he doesn't have to play right away, which he's not ready to play right. He's a project. So it's like you have Geno Smith play for a year, maybe two, while Anthony Richardson develops, you know, behind him. So then that way when Geno Smith fades out like he should eventually, man, Anthony Richardson can come in and produce. Um... 21, you got the Chargers. Now, the, again, a clear new here is the interior of the defensive line. So I have them taking Siaki Ika from Baylor. Um, now, to me, he's not necessarily a first-round prospect, more of a high-end second-round prospect, but because, again, of that need, they're going to reach here and get him. Um, 22 is Baltimore. I have them taking, I mean, it's clear here that they need another receiver. So I'm going to take a wide receiver, Quentin Johnston from TCU, who's emerged this year. Um, again, you can go. You can't go wrong with a couple. There's a couple receivers that can be. You know, the argument they should go first. You can't go wrong with a lot of them. But I'm gonna have them go with the TC wide receiver. Once again, like they did with Jalen Regular a couple years ago, they're gonna take another risk on that. Um, 23 is Minnesota. They clearly need. Well, they have a couple needs. One, um, more of a defensive line presence, but also just secondary. So I'm gonna have them take a cornerback here in Keely Ringo from Georgia. 24 Jacksonville. I'm going to have them take a, an interior offensive lineman here because that's one of the few areas they need to work on besides a few areas in the defense. But I'm going to have them take Osiris Torrance, a guard from Florida. 25 New York Giants. Now, the clear near here that they need, you know, besides maybe a great quarterback, in my opinion, is a wide receiver. So I'm going to have them take Jackson Smith and Nick Jibba from Ohio State. Again, he was projected top 10 pick, but because of his injuries this year, that's why he's going to be falling down. But, you know, when he was on the field, he was definitely the best player on there, no denying that. Um, 26, Dallas. Now, they can go a couple different routes here. They're probably going to let Zeke go and franchise Ty Pollard, which means they might have to let Dalton Schultz go. If they do, they can use another tight end there, although they have a couple that they like in uh, Ferguson and Hendershoot, so I think they can wait there until the second round. Um, they could draft running back. You know, B. John Robinson still on the board at this point. He's a Texas guy. That'd be make tons of sense. Um, or they can draft, you know, another somewhere in the secondary because you know once there was once there was injuries in the secondary last year, you can you can clearly tell it was different. So they so it's a couple different options there. But I'm going to have them go with wide receiver Jordan Addison from USC. That way, Dad gets another weapon. Besides um, C.D. Lamb, because uh, Michael Gallup, you know, was still covering, wasn't really fully himself. So if he can be fully himself, then you have, you know, Gallup, Lamb, and now Jordan. So that's a good big, that's a good big three there. Especially if you can like re-sign T.Y. Hilton to be your fourth option, backup option in GPO or something like that. Would be a good enough receiving core because because you, you were lacking something in the playoffs last year with Amari Cooper being gone. Um, Twenty-seven Buffalo. The, again, the clear need here is offensive line help. So I'm going to have them take offense tackle, the other offense tackle from Ohio State, Darwin Jones. 28 Cincinnati, the reports are they're looking to move off um, Samaj P, not Samaj P, on um, Joe Mixon, um, kind of ready to move off his contract and all that. So if that's the case, I'm going to have them take running back B. John Robinson from Texas. That would be an excellent get for Cincinnati there. 29 New Orleans, um, they, they can go multiple different directions here. Um, but I'm going to have them go with the interior of the offensive line. I'm going to have and take center John Michael Schmitz from Minnesota here because offensive line play, having that key good offensive line like they did just a few years ago is very important, um, no matter who's quarterback. Um, 30, again, Philadelphia are just for death at this point. So, you, you know, you have Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, so I'm going to have them get that third receiver guy because they were kind of looking for that at times last year. I'm going to have them take Zay Flowers from Boston College, one of the most underrated receivers in college football. Um, and then 31, Kansas City, last pick the first round. Again, they're just after for depth at this point, um, kind of like Philly is. But I'm going to have them take an offensive tackle here um, to shore up the offensive line. I'm going to take Darnell Wright, a tackle from Tennessee. So thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel, tell me about me. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day.